once again to the open stage, Megan Mayo. Hey. I also promised Russ I would take my shirt off at some point during this. Uh, oh, you want to see that? <laughs> It'd be like cottage cheese. You don't want to see that. I'm, I'm just being nice, okay? All right. <laughs> Please, you can also be nice. I rewrote some jokes, so you can let me know after the show how you like them, but let me know here so I can hear you laugh, okay? All right. So uh, for those of you who are new, uh, there's a little secret about me. I really, really hate Girl Scouts. <laughs> yeah, yeah. See, when I was little, my dad left us for the Girl Scout leader. Totally not his fault. Uh, she needed her homewrecking badge. And he, he was only trying to help. <laughs> but it's affected me for the rest of my life. Uh, now, every time I see a Girl Scout, I just punch that bitch right in the face. Then I buy five boxes of Thin Mints because that shit is delicious. Yeah. They taste like abandonment. Hmm. <laughs> so, uh, I wasn't here, not last week, but the week before because um, I went to PAX because I'm a nerd. Yeah, it's a video game convention in Seattle. And every nerd in Dallas was on my plane. Like, I got to the airport. I was like, yep, that's one of ours. That's one of ours. They all had on video game t-shirts, and I recognized all the references. And I'm getting in the plane, and I have a middle seat. And I get to my seat, and I notice that I'm sitting by two of the fattest nerds you had ever seen in your entire life. They were large, the Cheetos everywhere. It was gross. And that was the best flight I've ever had. I didn't have to bring my own airplane pillow. It was just enveloped in fat. OK, that was a new one. Thank you for giving me your feedback. I appreciate it. Um, I've been using The Secret lately, right? It's awesome. Um, yeah, The Secret. That's how you have to say it, because otherwise it's not a secret, right? It's uh, where you imagine something that you want, and it comes, the universe brings it back into your life. That's all you have to do. You don't have to work. Just imagine, and it shows up. Um, and I'm using it to go back to school, guys. Um, this time next year, I'm going to be at Hogwarts. All of you are going to be jealous. <laughs> I will, Sonia. For you, yes. Um, I've been reading a lot of self-help books lately, and um, I've come to realize that, you know, I'm not as successful as I wanted to be when I was 18 years old, and I have no one to blame but myself, right? Um, myself from the future who came back and ruined everything for me. Um, okay. All right. I, that's a fair assessment. That's a fair assessment. <laughs> that was the end of it. <laughs> Um, uh, let's see here. Um, I was watching the History Channel, and I was watching a conspiracy show, and this guy was swearing that the moon landing was a conspiracy, like it was filmed in a Hollywood stage, right? Yeah, it was. Do you remember what the, what the special effects were like in 1969? Come on. Like the moon would have been made of cheese. Neil Armstrong would have been wrapped in tin foil. Like it would have been terrible. But then I heard George Lucas was re-releasing it in uh, Blu-ray. As long as he doesn't delete any scenes, we'll be okay, right? And Pluto didn't shoot first. <laughs> That's right. As long as Han shoots first, it's going to be okay. This is the only audience that joke works on, by the way. <laughs> I've done it before to complete silence. Um, <laughs> I didn't do anything at PAX. I was just being nerdy. I was waiting in line in PAX. That's what I did. <laughs> there was lots of lines. Four hours to play the new Star Wars game for, t for five minutes. Four hours is insane. Um, <laughs> Disneyland. Um, we, uh, my husband and I, um, we are uh, working on investing for our future. Um, so I went out and bought a 1080p television and a PlayStation 3. Yeah. yeah. That's right. He came home. He was pissed. He was not very happy. And he was like, we're supposed to be investing for our future and our children. I'm like, this is the future. <laughs> All right. I told you it was mostly new stuff. Okay. Um, my husband and I actually uh, met online. 
and he told me he was a beefcake. Turns out the cake was a lie. Ah, <laughs> oh, that felt good. I've been wanting to do that for a long time. <laughs> we used to put, video games used to bring us together, right? But now instead of Mortal Kombat, we play Marital Kombat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Now I can't finish this joke. Thanks a lot. <laughs> no, I'll go ahead and do it. You guys can laugh like you never heard it. Okay, we'll pretend. We'll just pretend. Um, right now we're in marriage counseling, ac actually. He says it's because I beat him and because I cheat. I think he should just get better at Halo. Um, he should learn those maps like the back of my hand. He's a writer, too, and we fight over email. And uh, the other day, he wrote me something. Um, he's, like, he's like a real writer. He writes novels and stuff. He doesn't do this, this thing right here, whatever I'm doing, making dick jokes on stage in front of people. <laughs> dick jokes, yay. Um, <laughs> but the other day, he wrote me an email. We, we've been fighting for a while. And he's like, Megan, uh, your thoughts are like oysters, potentially hazardous to the health and slimy to the touch. And all I could think was, finish him. See, now, now we're supposed to pretend we didn't hear that yet. There you go. <laughs> That's right. And I said, uh, it took me eight hours to come up with a response, but I did. And it was, um, yeah, well, you have a small dick. Um, all right. <laughs> Somebody thought that was really mean. <laughs> He's all right. He's not small, but... Um. <laughs> Bitter. Bitter. <laughs> Uh, all right, I'm going to start wrapping it up here. Um, I have a bunch of guy friends, and we were at a stripper bar the other night. Yeah, and they were all good, getting, you know, hot and bothered over this girl named Fantasy, right? Yeah, like, that bitch had fake, fake tan, fake boobs, and a weave. Her name should have been Plagiarism. <laughs> and I like how strippers, like... They name themselves after their daddy issues, right? Like fantasy, like her dad went and played fantasy football instead of, you know, hung out with her. Or Bentley, her dad just liked the car more. Like, if I was a stripper, my name would be Thin Mint. <laughs> that is what we call a callback. <laughs> or, or we could do this one. Let me know which one you like better. Okay, there's Thin Mint. Or if I was a stripper, my name would be Onomatopoeia. Because I make you want to go boom, boom, boom. Which one? No? Thin Mint. The, thin Mint. Okay, thanks. That's why I come here. <laughs> oh, uh, last time I came here, there were two um, spoken word poets who went up, and they inspired me to write a poem, so I want to share it with you. A little background for those of you who are first-timers. Um, I work at Starbucks on the weekends. Yeah, so um, I wrote a little poem called Barista's Revenge. All right, ready? Hill hath no fury, like a tip jar ignored. You think you're safe, but you'll get yours. Racing heart, shortness of breath, insomnia, and restlessness. Blurry vision, bet you're mad. You ask for decaf, oops, my bad. All right. <laughs> I did that one at a bar, and that was also very silent. <laughs> Why are you reading poetry? All right, I'm going to end on this one, and then Russ can come up to the stage. Um, another part about working at Starbucks, my favorite part is when I work in the drive-thru, because there's a camera that sees into your car. Most people don't own that. Yeah, it's awesome. And one morning I'm working, and I hear the little beep go off on my headphone, and I'm turning to the monitor to see who's there, and I'm like, how can I help you? And there is a chick giving a guy a blowjob <laughs> in the Starbucks drive through Yeah. I mean, I know that shit's expensive, ladies, but come on, this isn't in an out Burger. Yeah, so he pulls up to the window, right? And I'm trying not to look at this guy. <laughs> I want nothing to, I can't look him in the eye, right? And he makes a motion out the window like he has money. And so I go to reach for it, but I don't have the coffee. So we just kind of meet in the middle. We're like holding hands outside the window. 
And I don't know what to do, right? So I freak out. And I'm just like, so uh, do you come here often? <laughs> All right, guys, that's my time. I'm Megan Mayo. Let's bring Russ back up to the stage. <laughs>